Good to be with you all. Stanny. Please, thank you. If I were smart, I should leave now. Thank you all so very, very much. I don't see her, but I see I hear my buddy Nancy Pelosi's here. Are you here, Nancy? Nancy, thank you. I love you. I love you. Really truly. And I see Stenny Hoyer's here. Stenny's been living in the western shore of Delaware for a long time. <laughs> Good to see you, Stenny. And is Jim Clyburn here? Well, if, if Jim is here, he's one of the reasons why I'm standing here. I want to thank him. Akeem and Catherine and Pete, thank you to all of you, to all of you. Let me say a few things before I get started with our discussion. First, I'm not going to be very long, I promise. First, the special counsel released their findings today about their look into my handling of classified documents. I was pleased to see they reached the conclusion I believed and knew all along they would, that there are no charges should be brought in this case. As many of you know, this was an exhaustive investigation going back literally more than 40 years. 40 years when I became a United States senator when I was a kid. I was a kid, 29 years old. <laughs> Special counsel acknowledged I cooperated completely. I did not throw up any roadblocks. I sought no delays. In fact, I was so determined to give special counsel what they needed, I went forward with a five-hour in-person interview over the two days of October the 9th, 8th and 9th last year, even though Israel had just been attacked by Hamas on the 7th. I was in the middle of handling an international crisis, but I was especially pleased to see the special counsel make clear the stark differences between this case and Donald Trump. As the special counsel wrote, and I quote, several material distinctions between Mr. Trump's case and Mr. Biden's are clear. And by the way, this is a Republican counsel. Most notably, after given multiple chances, this is the continuation of the quote, he returned classified documents and avoided to avoid and avoided prosecution. Mr. Trump allegedly did the opposite. This is continued in quote. According to the indictment, he has not only refused to return documents for many months, he also obstructed justice by enlisting others to destroy evidence and then lie about it. In contrast, Mr. Biden turned in classified documents to the National Archives, the Department of Justice, consented to a search of multiple locations, including his homes, and sat for a voluntary interview, and in other ways cooperated with the investigation. That's the distinction, among others. <laughs> Bottom line is the special counsel, in my case, decided against moving forward with any charges, and this matter is now closed. I'll continue to do what I've always done, stay focused on my job, like you do, of my job of being president. That means going to work with all of you every single day I can. Thank you for being great partners. Just this week, House Democrats showed how united you are. You defeated Mayorkas impeachment resolution. You <laughs> And I no doubt he's out of his hospital bed and come in to vote. No, I'm not joking. I talked to him a little bit. Not maybe after, not before. <laughs> you defeated the Israel only the Israeli only supplemental. They weren't easy votes for you, but all of you came through in a big way. All of this just shows that when we're united, we can beat House Republicans in their cynical political games. And you've been incredible partners that have delivered historic results for the American people. I've traveled to many of your districts. I see the results on how you came through one of the toughest periods in our nation's history. Akeem just mentioned many of those accomplishments. Vaccinating America, rebuilding America, bringing prices down and delivering every day for everyday Americans. Recent Washington Post headline, I never thought I'd see this for a Democrat, says, falling inflation and rising growth give the United States the world's best recovery, end of quote. Because of you. No, I mean it. I may have some good idea, but you got it done. But I'd like to use my time to talk about the future. 
you know, of what it means to finish the job, in my perspective, from my perspective. We made progress making the biggest corporations begin to pay, only begin to pay their fair share. We got, we were able to keep everything in place when the Republicans kept changing the deals we made about spending and like, right? Remember those days? days? Well, with the minimum corporate, remember those 50 corporations that didn't pay a penny in taxes, made $40 billion? Well, guess what? They paid a corporate tax of 15% and we were able to keep everything paid for and we still cut the deficit. We helped, we helped pay for historic investments and reduce the federal deficit. But we're not done. Trump's $2 trillion tax cut overwhelmingly benefited the super wealthy and biggest corporations and exploded the deficit. And it's coming up pretty soon for a decision of what we're going to do. He, he's already said he wants to not only keep it, but increase it. Finishing the job means getting the Trump tax cut, gutting the Trump tax cut, closing the loophole for billionaire minimum tax. You know, we went from 750 billionaires in America before the pandemic to 1,000 now. You know what the average tax they pay is in federal tax? 8.3%. Billionaire. Those thousand. 8.3%. That's less than a teacher, a firefighter. And I go down the list. I promised a billionaire minimum tax of 25%. If we did that, it would raise $440 billion. 25%, $440 billion to pay for child care, elder care, and so much more and reduce the deficit. You know, we're also planning for a long-term effort to, I think we have to deal with the tax structure in a way. I mean, I, I, no matter where I go, whether I'm speaking to business roundtable, whoever I'm speaking to, I say, raise your hand if you think the present tax system is fair. Uh, no, I'm not sure. Think about it in, pr in practical terms. Is it fair? Is it remotely fair? Finish the job of meeting, beating Big Pharma again to lower prescription costs for everybody. And by the way, you know, when my Republican friends were taking us on on that, but it not only lowers, you, you talked about dealing with insulin, 35 bucks a month, save the, save the individual a lot of money, but guess what? It saved the taxpayers $160 billion. Reduce the debt by $160 billion, what we did, what you all did, pharma. I mean it. I mean, we, the things we're doing not only help people, but they're reducing the deficit of good economic policy because Medicare doesn't have to pay those exorbitant prices. We've got to finish the job means $35 insulin, not just for the, uh, uh, Medicare, but like we originally had, and they wouldn't continue it, $35 insulin for everybody, everybody, all Americans. Lower drug prices for dozens of other prescriptions. We got that into the law. It's coming up. And getting even more American health insurance by protecting and expanding the Affordable Health Care Act. You, you guys have done this. We've got to finish the job means making housing more affordable, more accessible. It means protecting and strengthening the Social Security system and Medicare. The Republicans want to put on a chopping block. Remember the last State of the Union when I, we talked about what they're? Bless me, Father. And finishing the job means protecting fundamental freedoms. Passing the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, finally. <laughs> and making Roe v. Ward the law of the land. The law of the land. It means beating the NRA again, banning assault weapons, high capacity magazines, which we did before. Finishing the job means continuing our fight to save the planet with the most aggressive action on climate ever in the history of the, of the world with every new bridge, every new factory, every new high-speed rail internet, with every poisonous lead pipe removed. I see something else happening now and in the future. Pride's returning. When I said, when I we pushed all these programs, I said, I'm going to be a president for everybody, whether you live in a red state or a green state. I know it drives some of you crazy that we, a lot of these things are happening in red states. But the Americans need help. You know, uh, some of your more interesting colleagues uh, go out and hold press conferences of the things they said was a disaster and was almost immoral. What's that blonde-haired woman's name? Anyway, <laughs> she's talking about all that's going on in her district. <laughs> oh, God, anyway. <laughs> Look, what happened to a lot of people, particularly in the, in the near Midwest, in the Midwest, in the Northwest, is that you know, for years and years, you go by the factory that employed 800, 1,000, 1,200 people. 
Mom had worked there, dad had worked there, grandpa, grandma, and they had pride in what they did. And all of a sudden, corporate America decided, and it really did over the last 10 years, decided, you know, I'd rather take my factory, move it overseas because the labor is cheaper, and then import the product. Not anymore. Not anymore. Guess what, folks? There's a provision in the law that says that I didn't even know it existed until I, about eight years ago. And that is when they had legislation in the 30s dealing with the issue of whether or not labor unions had a right to organize, what protections they had, et cetera. There was a provision in the law that even Democratic presidents didn't either know about or pay much attention to. It said any money you appropriate, the Congress appropriates, and it goes to the President of the United States for public purpose, that President should hire an American worker and American companies to do it. <laughs> Fully. Well, we're investing in America. That's what you're doing. We're investing in America. We're bringing back pride to communities, pride in our country. And so I want to thank you for doing the job you were elected to do. It matters to the American people, and it's, we're in a position to win in 2024, I think. That brings me to the second point. We have to make the contrast, the choice, crystal clear through our friends on the other side and make it easy for us. Time and again, Republicans show they're a party of chaos and disunion. This is not your father's Republican Party. They shout about a problem, but then do nothing to solve the problem. The bottom line is Republicans have to decide, who do they serve? This, I'm not, this is not hyperbole. Who do they serve? Donald Trump or the American people? You had worked so hard, bipartisan group, so hard for so long to deal with the border and all the other issues we have in that, uh, that appropriation. And guess what? Donald Trump allegedly, I can't prove this, I'm told, called people and said, if you support that, I'm coming after you. Not his, not, I don't know what the exact words were, but I'm coming after you. Are they here to solve a problem or just to weaponize for political attacks those problems? I know our answer. We're here to serve the American people. That's not, it's not like we, we're here, we're the Democrats, we're all. That's the job. Serve the American people. And we have to make that clear. If we do, we win. Just look at 2020. We weren't supposed to do well, remember? We won. In spite of a lot of things. 2022. The red wave was coming, and guess what? It crashed up on a rock. In 2023, every close race we won. When voters have a choice between what we stand for and what Trump and the mega Republicans stand for, we win. Which makes Trump and his mega friends losers. When we win, we have to do the old-fashioned politics way. We have to get out the vote, an aggressive grassroots operation to get folks registered and get out the vote. And here's the final point I want to make. I can't take anything for granted. We can't. In 2020, we ran, I ran because I thought everything in this country stood for, everything we believed in, everything that made America America was at risk, and I believed that, and I spoke to that. And I was, uh, I think people thought I was being hyperbolic at the time. Joe, what do you mean our democracy is? Seriously, remember I made that speech? You may not, but I made a speech in Independence Hall in the beginning. What do you mean we're in a battle for the soul of America? Well, people don't say that anymore. They know the stakes are higher than ever. We've made more progress in three years because of you than most presidents have in eight years. But it can all be wiped out in this election. So we have to stay focused on what we have to do. We must, we must keep the White House. We must keep the Senate, and we must Take back the House. With all of you sworn in again, and Akeem Jeffries, your Speaker of the House. And when we do that, we'll be able to look back and say something a few generations can say. The American democracy is at risk, and you saved it. Look, we just have to remember who the hell we are. We're the United States of America. I mean it. There's nothing beyond our capacity when we work together. So God bless you all, and thank you for all you do. Thank you, thank you, thank you.